I was just running it. So now, having to work through problems and issues and challenges, what I did is, if I had a problem with you, I'm just be real. I had a problem with my father. Jesus, son of man, son of God, perfect. So I had a problem with him. I definitely had a problem with him. Because he's going to let me down like how he let me down. I can't trust him. He's going to hurt my feelings like he hurt my feelings. Right? So guess what? That translated into my marriage. Ah, she's going to let me down too because of what happened with him. So then all my relationships became where I put these boundaries or these borders up these walls so no one can get in there because I didn't want nobody to do what? Crush my heart. I don't know if any of you guys are in this situation, but I'm just telling you my story because in the end, it is what it is. Like, I'm good now. I'm solid now. I have no worries, no stresses, nothing. God got me. And he can have you too. Right? I grew up, and I'm going to tell you like this. I grew up where I had two pairs of shoes. One that when school started in September, in California, we started school a lot later than you guys. I would wear that all the way to the summertime, got another pair of shoes, and wore it all around. And I had to play baseball and football in them. Right? And they would ask my parents and stuff, and they was like, well, we'll see. And I used to say, I hate, we'll see. That word I hate, maybe, we'll see, or maybe later. I hate those words, even to this day. So, <laughs> I didn't, I tried to do everything on my own. I thought if I practice hard, if I did this, you know, I can control my own fate, my own future. And what that made me become self-reliant. So I was self-reliant and trying to do everything on my own. I wasn't trusting people. And so I thought my life was going in a really good direction, but I was actually going through life like this. You know what that is? That's a tornado. You know what happens in tornadoes? When it hits houses and stuff, what does it do? It destroys it, tears it up. So was I actually building up people or was I tearing up people as I was going on because of my issues, my problems, my trauma? Was I building or was I tearing down, tearing down stuff? One more time. One more time. See, now, see, now you guys are with me. If I say, if I say something three times, that means I really mean it. I really want you guys to get it. Okay. So check this out. At night, tonight, you see me at first base. I'll be the guy with the watch right here. And if I'm talking to the guy, he's like, he must be saying something because he's probably saying it three times. It's like this. Look, hey, hit and run. Keep running. Hit and run. Keep running. Hit and run. He'll go. Okay. And then we'll go. If he doesn't go, what do you think the next conversation is going to be on the next pitch? Why didn't you go? Why didn't you go? That's holding him accountable. That's like, hey, how come you didn't turn your homework? And what I found in my time is when it was time for me to be held accountable, guess what? Mm -mm, I didn't want to have a conversation with you. <laughs> Coach, come talk to me. I'll be like this at first. Didn't want to hear it. I ran from challenges, which leads me to the last thing. Because of that, I was a walking tornado, right? I was self-reliant, building up walls. I ran away from challenges. I ran away from stuff that came to my life. And I got to a point where I had to stop and I go, okay, this running, this avoiding, this deflecting, this defending has done nothing but hurt other people. And more importantly, hurt myself. And the most importantly, it kept drifting me away from God. And I said, I wanted to stop that. I needed to turn my attention, my focus back to him and allow him to continue to draw me. So because of that, I've decided to be a lifelong challenge acceptor. Once again, I decided to be a lifelong challenge acceptor. Let me remix it. One more time, I decided to be a what? <coughs> lifetime challenge acceptor. And being a lifelong cha lifetime challenge acceptor, guess what? I don't have to have no answers. I just believe that he'll give me the answers. Right? He'll bring people in my, in my life, cross my path, a quick conversation that will help lead me to the answer. I don't have to figure it out. I become... And this is the part that when you talk about the Bible, you talk about sheep, 
I hated it because I grew up in California and I didn't see no sheep. So I'm reading the Bible <laughs> like sheep, like I, I can't relate to this. What about a stray dog? I can relate to a stray dog living in California, right? So <laughs> because of that, my stray dog doesn't have a home. A stray dog is relying on what he finds, scraps to eat off of. And that's not how we were supposed to live. Right? Last story is in the Bible. This relates to me. I was a kid that ran away from my parents emotionally. I had, I had to depend on them, right? Because I had to eat. So I know where to go to eat. But when they would talk to me, I would give them just enough, right? So when somebody talks to you, you, you have to ask you a question. You got two options. You got three. The first one, I suggest you never do lie. Two, you can give them a answer. Like if, you know, if you're really hungry, hey, you want something to eat? Yeah. Or you can give them the answer, right? And the answer is, are you hungry? Yes, man. And if I could, I would like to have a hamburger, french fries. I would like to have this. I would like to go to Burgatory, wherever the food place is here in California. It's in and out. And I'd love to sit down and have it there. See the difference between answers? So, because I chose to be a lifelong challenge acceptor, I chose to be real. I chose to talk about the things that I would keep locked up in my heart on the inside that I didn't want to tell because I believe if I really said what I felt, one, I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I wasn't valuable. And I felt like people wouldn't believe or care about what I had to say. And this was this is the crazy part. I was playing in stadiums all across the world and people were thinking, man, he's got a great life and things were going well. But on the inside, I was dying. I was hurting. I was crying. I just wanted to be loved. And being loved meant, for me, what I thought what it was was nowhere near. Just understanding that, man, God sent the guy down here to get beat beyond recognition. A guy that got tempted in every area that I, I will be tempted in or have been tempted in and never fail, undefeated champion. So we talk about Floyd Mayweather being the best ever. Floyd Mayweather got nothing on God, got nothing on Jesus. He, he don't lose, right? There's no bad press about him. He ain't said a bad word. He ain't cussed underneath his breath when his parents told him to go clean his room, right? Like he was just rolling in the perfect will. All of a sudden somebody need a need. He's like, let me just go over here. Touch the person, bless him. And I'm saying that same guy touched my heart and I started to renew my mind and my heart and my mind because he changed his heart to where I'm at a place where I'm experiencing peace. But also in that, I will tell you, when you're walking away from something, you still have challenges. But guess what? I don't have to face those challenges by myself anymore. I got someone that's in front of me on my side that's helping me out. So what I want to share at this, this end is when you guys are out here on these fields, honing your skills, learning new things, this is where you guys get to take stuff into the games when you play. Because the last thing that we want to do when we get on the field and we're playing is we don't want to lose and we don't want to get embarrassed. And there's only two ways to handle the last part is that you work your, your butt off. You listen to instruction to be the best teammate that you can be. Like you could have struck out in the big moment, right? And you're sitting on the bench. And you want somebody to come over and say, hey man, you'll get them next time. Well, I've learned that if I'm always searching to find a way to lift somebody up, that in my time of need, somebody will be that. So, if you guys come to a game, and when we come off the field on defense, You'll see one hand right next to the steps when the players come down, and you see a guy high fiving. I call myself a barrier breaker. I call myself a, a energy exchanger. When guys come in, good job. Come on, let's go. We can get them. Come on, let's go. Here we go. Come on, let's go. Here we go. And the time I need it the most, when I'm coming out and things are on my mind and I'm trying to solve a problem, the player goes, "Man, it's good to see you today." Oh man, I needed that. Mm. I'm going to say something because
we got two rookies that just got called up. And one was struggling in AAA. He was struggling bad. I sent him a message. Hey, man, I'm thinking about you. Is there anything I can do for you? How are things going? Man, I'm struggling. You know, I don't know what's going on. Well, let's just talk about it. We're, we're texting because that's what your generation does. We text. And so we get to the end of the conversation. I go, man, I believe in you, man. You just keep working hard. And one day I'll see you here. He gets called up two days ago. I see him. He goes, man, that text message, when I was hurting, it helped me get through that moment. It's why I'm here today. And I said, man, I can't take no credit. I was just being who I'm supposed to be. A guy that gives energy, that gives life, that helps others break barriers as I'm breaking barriers myself. Because I decided one thing, I need him, Jesus, and I decided to be a lifelong challenge acceptor. One more time, lifelong challenge acceptor. For the third time, that means I really mean it. Lifelong challenge acceptor. Now, if you would like to be a lifelong challenge acceptor, there's really two easy things that you can do. Anybody want to be a lifelong challenge acceptor? Anybody want to be one? It takes commitment, right? It takes being accountable, right? But I know if your parents was here, they always, they always challenging you. So you might as well accept the challenge because somebody's going to challenge you. Your parents are going to challenge you. Your coach is going to challenge you. You might as well hit it because you're going to hear it, right? My son, I got two boys, 124, 120. They still hear it every day. Hey, man, what are you doing? What are you doing with your time? That's all we got here. What are you doing with your time today? Well, I really have nothing planned. So you're going to sit around the day with nothing planned. You have no goals. It's okay. 